Hello and welcome back. Today I have another GPSDO. This time it's from a UK company. It's called Leo Botner and uh, it's the LBE 1421. And that is the smallest and probably the most energy efficient and the most versatile GPSDO I have had in the lab here. Uh, it is super small. I will show you the size. It has two outputs that you can program. The first output you can program between 1 MHz all the way up to 800 MHz. And the second port can even go up to 1400 MHz. And why is it so versatile? Well, this first port that goes to 800 MHz, you can also set that it exports one PPS. So if you want to connect it to a clock, also it can export EMEA data. It already does that over the virtual COM port, but it also can do it on this first port. So you connect it to your transceiver. So your transceiver has the right location and timing. Because all these ports are all uh, free programmable, you can do, of course, the 10 megahertz for your lab. The one PPS, you can connect it to your clock if you are a time nut. For older equipment, you can program it to one megahertz, five megahertz, two megahertz, whatever your old equipment needs. And if you are in ham radio or SDR, you can also use it as a reference for your receiver or your transceiver. So what we have, nice box, let's open it, we get the thank you card and the GPSDO itself, look at this, how small this is. We get also a nice GPS antenna with the magnet, it's those uh, standard antennas, although it does have a Leo Botner logo, so maybe it works better than the one I have. And a proper USB-C to old USB cable. It really is super small. Look at this compared to my hands. Uh, output one here can also do one PPS. So you can do it from uh, one hertz all the way up to 800 megahertz, or you select the option one PPS, or you select the option uh, NMIA, which it then will output the TTL format of NMIA. Output two here can do also one hertz, but all the way up to 1400 megahertz. And I think you have two power options. Then the high power option is like a plus 10 uh, dBm and the lower power is uh, 5 uh, dBm. Well, what we have, we have two LEDs here that will give you the status if it's locked or not locked. We have here on the other side the GPS antenna input and here the USB-C connector, which is for the power, uh, but also for the virtual USB ports because this one also exports the NMIA data and you can use it to configure the device. The USB cable also looks proper quality. It even has the Leo Botner logo. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. Nice. It also all the same colors. So we just need to power it. To power it, we use the USB cable. So you can stick it directly in your computer or your laptop. But if you want to run it 24 hours, you probably don't want to have your computer switch on 24 hours. Then probably it's easier to use a little powered USB up. The GPSDO will be powered through the USB hub. Whenever the computer is on or off, it does not matter. For the test, I will just connect it directly to the computer. I do want to know how much current it takes. So I will just use my little USB power meter like this. I do, of course, need the GPS signal. I have one antenna on the roof, but I have a nice active splitter here. So I have a proper GPS signal right here. Here we have it on the website. I'm going to download uh, firmware updater and the control software. Well, we can see here the low jitter outputs. Uh, well, very uh, low phase noise. Well, this is a little bit too much uh, time net for me. And here we have the configuration software. It looks very simple to use. 
And I also have a plug to use your icon with the NMIA data coming out from port one if you switch it over to that uh, NMIA option. And you can program then your other port to 49152. And then you use this injection board and then you have a much more stable icon and you can probably use it in other transceivers too, but this is a kit that is very popular. So we have the power, we have the GPS signal, we have here two LEDs so we can see the status. Maybe if I place it like this, we can see the LEDs. And now we're connected to the computer. Okay, it is powered. We see the lights blinking and it is trying to find a lock. It comes also with configuration software. You can download it on the website and oh, it's already locked. Look at that. That was fast. Uh, it doesn't ask any COM ports. It just finds the device itself. It detects the serial number, the firmware here. I'm running 109. Uh, they have something called Firmware Doctor here. It works very smooth. Uh, I did this before. I will show you that uh, later. What do we see? Well, we have here the frequencies that we can change. It is now uh, 10 megahertz. But the resolution, you can just set it like this on, on 1 millihertz, which is amazing. We can also do low power mode. I will show this on the spectrum analyzer. And we can do the 1 PPS. And then it will just export the one PPS through this port. And here we have the MAR. We will have a data train. And I will show you that also on the Horsley scope. Here we have all the satellites that we see. And we, by default, they switch on all the networks. So we have the GPS from the US. We have Galileo from Europe. And we have here the GLONASS from Russia. The good thing is if you have so many satellites, you probably have a very fast lock. But we can also just switch a few off. Now we're only running on the US. Or if we only want to run on Galileo. Or you only want to run on the Russians. That is all possible. And you see here also Baidu. Uh, that's China probably. SBUS is sort of the GPS, but not like the classical one. The classical one had a ground station and you need the VHF receiver as well when you're uh, on the receiving end. But now it just sends it back to the satellite and the satellite just sends it in the same frequencies uh, back to your uh, receiver here. Let's go back to factory. Okay, all the satellites are available again. We can switch off. All the outputs on and off. The NMIA export is not only exported on port one, but also continuously over the virtual COM port that we are running. This one is using now the virtual COM port and uh, we can configure now the device. It is powered also through the same device, but still the port can be shared because if I start now another GPS program and I'm going to read from this virtual COM port the NMIA data that is always there. And look at this, I get here the same satellite information. Right now it only exports the GPS information, but they are looking into also sending the rest. They want to keep it as compatible as possible, of course, because also when you switch on this NMIA option, all the receivers need to understand the protocol, but maybe they can extend it for the USB. And now here we are looking at about the same information as we have here. And then there is this one other option, the FLL. This is an option where you can switch from PLL to FLL mode. So what does that do, the FLL? Of course, I wanted to know also, so I asked Leo Bodner, and they said, well, if you switch that on, you get the be better Allen deviation performance, but it will cost a little bit of the absolute uh, frequency offset. So. 
for some of the time nerds, they will probably exactly know what it is, but I didn't. So I asked my friend uh, Steve G8XGG, he is also in the time node, and he was able to explain it much more easy. He said, well, you have two modes. It's the PLL mode that is usually the most preferred one because it's very reliable. It is a little bit more complex to build as a circuit. And then you have the FLL, which is the frequency locked loop. And that is easier to build. Some of the home built uh, GPS DOs will also use that. Well, the difference is, of course, the phase lock. We'll look at the uh, two phases between the OCXO and the receive signal from the GPS compared to the one PPS. So when you find that the phase is slowly moving, you adjust the OCXO and then to get them in sync. And with the frequency lock loop, you kind of uh, count all the pulses between all the one PPS signals and you can adjust based on that. So why would you change to that little bit lesser FLL, even though it gives you a better Allen deviation performance? Well, maybe if you have a lot of RF distortion and you are unable to detect the proper phase shift, then maybe it's better to use the frequency lock loop. Now I want to connect it to the oscilloscope and also to the spectrum analyzer to see if the power is in the 10 dBm and around 5 dBm. Um, I will use the web interface on the PC because then we can see both the configuration software and immediately the result on the web interfaces of those uh, devices. The current draw over USB, it's about uh, 320 milliamps and I think the one port version was about 250, which is very, very low. So let's play a little bit with this multifunction port and uh, the port one. We should be able to do one PPS and MIA, and we have here the low power, high power. So I open my oscilloscope, and we can do this all at the same time. So here we have 10 megahertz. If I make that uh, 20 megahertz, we will see that, yes, it works. If I do low power, we switch it over from 10 dBm to 5 dBm. That also seems to work. Let's go back to 10 megahertz, set that, puff, response very fast. We can do the 1 ppm. Let me change the scope a little bit. Here we have the 1 ppm. And if I switch it off, we go back to 10 megahertz. So that will be full. And let's do the NMIA output. Look at that, we have a data stream. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, and we should be able to decode this, but I don't know how it should be possible with this uh, scope, but that all seems to work. And we are back to our 10 megahertz. Let's also connect the spectrum analyzer if this uh, around the 10 dBm and 5 dBm is indeed the case. Well, I set it to 10 megahertz here and they say indeed it is around 10. And if I do low power mode, it drops around 4 in a bit. Well, I have some little loss in the cable, of course. And uh, well, we can check a higher frequency as well. Let's go to uh, 100. 100 megahertz. Then we are also around this 10 dBm. And in low power, we go again around this 4 or 5. Yeah, here we are. Uh, maybe I can do even higher. What about this one goes to 800, I think. 800. At 800, we see a little bit more the drop. It is not around this 10 anymore, but of course, that could also be my cables. And in low power mode, do we have four and a half? Now we go back to one, but we are in a crazy high frequency for the GPS DL. The configuration software also works very uh, direct. So if I put it here on the uh, frequency, let me hear. Here we have the frequency. This is compared to my other GPS DO. Well, the last digit is always a little bit tricky. But uh, what if I change the frequency, which port is the port number two? 
uh, I will change that to 20 mega hertz and I click the set button. There we have it. 20 mega hertz, no problem. But if I want to use it for a reference, for instance, for this uh, SDR device, I think it is 28.8 mega hertz. We just change it to 28.8. Twenty-eight eight. Here we have it. Forty-nine one five two for the icon. No problem. But if you want it a bit a bit more uh, precise, you can even do that. Look at this. Here we are on the milli hatch, and I think we can even go lower to a micro hatch, and it accepts the setting. Well, I cannot measure this with my frequency counters, but it seems pretty cool. Well, let's try it anyway. And let me do 10.1. Uh, yes, it is actually doing that. That is amazing. I'm doing now 0 0.50. Look at this. It's actually doing it. Here we can see also we have firmware 107. And to update the firmware, they also have nice software. And that's called the Firmware Doctor. You can download that also from their website. And when I start this, you can see, okay, you have this GPSDO. And it's running 107 and there is an update 109. So let's just try that. Also, it's not asking any questions about the COM ports. We can see here it disconnected. It is now reconnecting again. Probably it switches over to this uh, DFO mode. And now it just says, okay, you will have a 109. So when we go back now to the configuration software, yes, it says we have firmware 109. That was very, very smooth. And now also the option NBA is on. That is great. So that was it. A little bit messy maybe because I wanted to tell so much at the same time. And... Um, and when it comes to the time battery, I'm not into that that much. Um, as I said before, must be the smallest, most energy efficient and most versatile GPS DO I have had in the lab here. Thank you, Leo Botner. This was the LBE 1421, full of options in the little box. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.